Um, thank you very much for for your invitation. I am uh, very proud to be with you today. I very much I appreciate. I um, mean, the, the day I spent, uh, I mean, a uh, summer and, uh, ago uh, when we were uh, at uh, Frederick and Hans Frederick Larsen's farm, and uh, we had a pretty good day with you. So it is a great pleasure to be with you again. Um, in France, I, I am a farmer uh, in conservation agriculture for the last 25 years. Um, I'm also uh, uh, the editor of a, a, I mean, a farm magazine specialized in conservation agriculture for the 22 years. And I also do a, a lot of uh, lecture and teaching around the country and also uh, in, in different countries. Um, unfortunately, I speak only French and English, so well, you will have to listen to my to my English. But thank you anyway, uh, on Henrik, for the translation. Uh, I assume it is correct Danish. Yeah. All right. So today we will talk about uh, we will talk about weeds, and uh, and and uh, and weeds is a different uh, aspect. And this, when we start tilling the soil, we think weeds will be uh, big problems, but we will see that uh, that will teach us a lot of uh, agronomy. Uh, the first things I like to say that uh, we usually think that uh, weeds or, or tilling is the best way to manage weeds, but it's not working as well as we think. And, uh, and the second thing, uh, we think that agrochemicals um, is the best way to manage weeds. And I took this picture from England where the farmers are spraying some patch of uh, black grass to get rid of the black grass. But if you look carefully, uh, I mean, the future problem is still there. You're not you're saving yourself during the year, the year, but you're not preparing a better future. So, and also when you think about herbicide, herbicide is costing you two times or even costing you three times. It is a field where the farmers spray only the outskirt with a grass herbicide to keep the field clean and the outskirt of the field to be clean. But when you look, uh, the herbicide uh, stunt the, the wheat and, and so it reduces also the yield. And uh, we have also many problems with uh, growing cover crops after crops because the pressure of herbicide is too strong. Um, herbicide or weed techniques that farmers have applied so far uh, are mainly uh, uh, eliminating uh, strategy. Uh, it's not trying to find a way uh, across, whether we spray, we burn, we roll, we who, but it's always an eliminating a combat posture. Uh, and we have to keep in mind that uh, most of the weed seeds can survive a very long time in the soil. Uh, grass seeds will uh, survive between uh, 10 to 15 years, but when you go to broad leaf, the survival in the soil is 20 years, 40 years, 50 years, even more. Uh, nightshade, for example, can survive 1,000 years, even more. So we have to think that the soil is like a, a storage of seeds that just waiting to be brought back up in order to germinate and be in a crop. So. Uh, we have to use all kinds of strategy. Uh, probably the first one will be sanitizing procedure, which means that we need to have clean seed. Uh, we need to uh, whether uh, uh, cut and bail part of the field is not good. Uh, everything that can do to get away from the seed is already something. Clean the machinery, for example. Uh, uh, it's something important. Um, the other thing we have to keep in mind, uh, I don't know if you will be able to see my pointer. Are you able to see my pointer? Uh, most of the seeds are emerging at one centimeter deep. And when you put seeds at five centimeter or seven centimeter, the emergence stop because uh, seeds are able to uh, uh, figure out how deep they are in the soil. 
because if they are too deep, uh, they will commit suicide and they are not the energy to come up and, and do photosynthesis. Uh, so uh, perma in permanently, constantly in the soil, seeds are measuring how deep they are. And if you bury seed deep in the soil, they're just waiting in order to come back again when you bring them up. So soil is a storage of seeds. Um, we compare uh, many years ago, uh, different strategy uh, and we, we, we choose uh, in order to manage dry grass in a minimum tillage system. And that is a minimum tillage with a, a smarag, so which is a probably 10 to 12 centimeter deep action. And we see that uh, a dry summer, which is a green one, uh, tilling the soil, even bring more rye grass in the wheat. So it is counterproductive. If it's a dry summer, that's a blue one, you have low problem. Uh, so this means that uh, tilling uh, increase basically the rye grass into the fields. Uh, the second one is nothing is done. The field is left bare after harvest. And you see that the problem of rye grass is a little bit lower and more predictable. So this means that spending money uh, to combat ryegrass doesn't bring any difference. And by the time we put cover crop, which is a green one there, eh, uh, we have a better impact. So that's how we turn back to cover crop instead of spending the summer tilling the soil to combat uh, ryegrass, but increasing the ryegrass impact. And, and then uh, in our things, we have to work what we call mis multiple strategy. And uh, I like uh, the idea of uh, keep our weeds guessing, just being in advance in the weed thinking. So we do no-till because we keep the seed in the soil. Uh, we develop uh, uh, the mulch on the surface that make the seed think they are deeper than they are and not emerging. And we try to have a very competitive plant in order to use all the light. And also uh, what we say variation of crop cycle, which mean uh, trying to plant and to harvest at a very different time. So if you increase your rotation with a plant, we have a seeding time and harvest time uh, at a different time, it will make a lot of things. And what we call the two by two rotation, which mean that we, uh, increase the break between two similar crop. And uh, that really changed the thing. First thing, well, soil are storing a lot of weeds. And if you look at the weeds or they spray in a plow system, well, you got weeds everywhere, weed seeds everywhere. When you go to no-till, the weeds will be at the surface in the first five centimeter. So this mean here, I mean, you are the weed pressure of your system and here you add the weed pressure of the crop that is just preceding your crop, which is a completely different strategy. And uh, many times people think tillage will solve the problem, but most of the time tillage increases the problem. So we have to be very careful about that. And also the uh, English uh, researchers uh, showed us, I mean, many years ago, that the decline of the weed seeds on the top of the soil was very high. I mean, they figured out that 70% of the seed was disappearing in only one cycle, one year. So that's mean if you got two years break, you uh, reduce 90% of the seeds. So that's our own this thing that we, we start to, to work. And this is working on many seeds. For example, that's a, uh, the, the, the biggest problem of IC rape in, in my country, it's crane builds. And, uh, and we found out that by going no-till with crane builds, we went from 100 cranes built per square meter, it is very dense capacity of cranes built, to almost five cranes built per meter, per square meter. And uh, I mean, the research in France say that the best Cranesville herbicide they found was no-till because we were not bringing seeds of Cranesville that can live 50, 60 years in the soil back into the surface when we were putting oil seed rape into the, into the fields. So this is very important. 
And then we, we learned by working with cover crop, we could do even better. And by reducing the speed of the equipment, uh, we were also reducing the number of weed per square meter. And when you work with a disc drill, and when you work with a cover crop, uh, you have a very, very low soil disturbance. And, and so uh, the seeds that are waiting for information in order to start germinating are just not getting the right information. You don't move them, you don't put, bring them to light, you leave them in the very stable environment, and then you put your crop and you can go from, if you go, I'm sorry, with a rapid Vedestat, where you go uh, 18 kilometers an hour, you move the soil, you got 16 weeds. And when you go to a, this drill, you go down to one, two, three weeds per square meter. That's how disturbance can affect the weeds. And by growing cover crop, you reduce even though the soil disturbance. Um, the rotation is also a very interesting procedure. And, and the rotation is working by anticipation. And that's how we work the two by two rotation with Mr. Dwenbeck from the United States. And, and uh, if you go to minimum tillage rotation one by one, you got 200 weeds per square meter. If you go no till, you go down to 100 weeds. So it's half the weeds by not having any tillage. But if you move the rotation by two by two, you divide the weeds by five. So the rotation is more important than going no-till. But if you go no-till, uh, the two by two rotation, you go down to approximately 10. So you divide the problem by 10. So which means a better effect of the rotation in no-till, which is on the good side. But if you don't choose the right rotation in no-till, you increase the problem by 10 as well. So it is just by going up, Okay, when you move uh, your strategy up, that means you have to have the best rotation in no-till. If your rotation is not set for no-till, the problem will increase the same way. And, and then thanks to this system, we, we can uh, put ourselves in what I call the comfort zone. That means when you are good at reducing a problem of weeds, you are bad at increasing another opposite problem of weeds. So that means that you will uh, manage your weed problem uh, just like a pendulum. You will go from one side to the other and you will have to keep moving. And uh, I, I build a, a kind of a example of rotation for a, a friend that is in organic in France and uh, he wanted to plant organic wheat direct. So I say first crop would got to be to corn, mice, and the second crop after cover crop is going to be uh, weizen, uh, buckwheat, boar weizen. And then you see that the uh, summer crop, some winter weeds are decreasing on the top of the soil, but then summer crop weeds are increasing. Then we go direct for wheat, for winter wheat, and the, the direct will be clean fields. Then we do some kind of very shallow cultivation, put the cover crop, and go for autumn mix, and then it's time to go back to summer crop. So you see how it will go again. The winter, winter weeds will start going down, and then the summer weeds will start going up. So the strategy has to be five years in head. The crop we have in front of us, which depend of the weed management of the two years before, and the crop will impact the weed problems the two next years. And it is an example in France last, last uh, September, I took this picture on an organic farmer and that's a cover crop on the left. And he just harvest a hemp uh, summer crop on the right. That's how weedy it was. So he planted direct into this and that's how it did look. We are an organic farmer, no glyphosate, no herbicide, just freezing just winter and winter killed everything because it was just summer weeds and if you work well with your weeds uh, you will also uh, have a great impact of many of the disease as well and all the pests because uh, weeds 
disease and pests are following each other. And if it's the right environment for the weeds, it will be the right environment for most of the disease and the right environment for the most of the pests. So that's mean that you will have other advantages. I mean, it, it's not 100%. Huh? You have to bear in mind that it's not 100%, but you have better advantage. Uh, just example, our uh, uh, cover crop can manage weeds. That is a field on my farm where I forget to plant a little part. And you see, well, the weeds are there. I still have weed seeds on my farm, but the cover crop can manage the weeds very, very easy. And, uh, and also we learn that uh, the cover crops are taking the cover, but then we can have a lot of carabide in the cover crop that are eating a lot of seeds. When you see here, the carabide population can eat 1,000 to 4,000 seeds of weeds per day. 1,000 to 4,000 weed seeds per day on the top of the soil. That's amazing. So we, we have to leave them working to uh, create a proper environment and it's what cover crop will bring. And we have now many information about that. Uh, there where the carabidae can be very helpful about weed management. Uh, so they're not managing the weeds in your crop. They are managing the future problem of weeds for your future crop by eating the seed. So uh, do not disturb the soil, uh, grow a protection above and supply the food for the carabidae because they may eat residue and they may eat leaves as well. And also uh, you are doing the right word, work for the soil and the recycling of the fertility. Then most of the crop uh, like lot nitrogen. They are very nitrogen scavenger. So in that field, uh, we put 20 kilogram of mustard and the problem is ray grass. So you see the ray grass in March and that's the ray grass under the 20 kilos of mustard. I mean, we capture all the nitrogen. So the ray grass is very low and, and so it's manageable. And then you have to look at the light and uh, by covering with legume, in that uh, experimentation. I mean, we capture all the like light and, and, and so you get the nitrogen, you capture the light with the legume over covering most of the weeds. So you manage the weeds. Then uh, when you work with the cover crop, you have to have the right plant according to the climate. So in summer, well, it's better to have summer plant in autumn, autumn plant in winter, winter plant. So, uh, and then by succeeding, in, into a uh, cover crop, we managed to roll the cover crop, but we rolled the cover crop only uh, when we did start to manage properly the, the cover crop. Uh, and, and some uh, farmers now are getting into what we call uh, uh, conservation agriculture, organic conservation agriculture. It's, it's an, an organic farmer uh, planting into cover crop in Alsace. And that's how it could look. And that's a little bit later. So it's sweet plus fertilizer. And it's how it did look in the middle of the winter. But we are in an organic farmer with no herbicide, no, no, for, no glyphosate. I'm not saying it is possible to do it 100%. I'm saying that we are now getting into this. That's uh, also pushing cover crop further uh, in order to use them as a cover uh, in order to reduce the future weeds and to manage the, the lack of water during the summer, it's soya bean. So it's once again an organic soya bean uh, in France with a direct drill into a cover crop. Uh, once again, I'm not saying that we do that on a big acreage, but uh, we manage to do that on small area uh, with a little bit of herbicide, it is possible to do a lot. And, uh, but in order to manage the weeds, we have to get to six, even eight tons of dry matter that we lay down flat on the soil. Uh, another way to manage the cover crop and to manage weeds is the sheep. That's the way we do on our farm. And, and, and the sheep, they eat uh, quite a lot of cover crop, but they also eat the weeds as well that they are in the cover crop. Or you can, you can cut the cover crop and put that for the animals or put that in a methanizer. And by cutting in the middle of the summer at a different time, 
it will keep your field clean as well. But then we're getting to uh, the little problems uh, with cover crop. By the, if we stop tilling, if we put a cover crop, we usually we have a lack of fertility at the beginning and the crop is not growing as well. And we, we talk many years about allelopathy, but it's not quite allelopathy, just a lack of nitrogen or fertility of early fertility. And this lack of fertility, early fertility is bad for the crop, but we can localize fertilizer and help it to start. But it's also bad for the weeds because the weeds like excess of fertility as well. So that's help us on the, the other way. But by growing, I mean, direct and cover crop, we, we made ourselves very low with nitrogen at the beginning. So we really had to fight that out and localize fertilizer for the start. And, but then you are only feeding your crop, but not feeding your weeds. So once again, you have a, a, another advantage of conservation agriculture, which is not a, 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 a little advantage. And then if by having a better weeds environment, if we grow mixed crop, uh, we are a little bit working like uh, our cover crop and uh, we are uh, combating more the weeds by taking the lights out. And uh, this is an example in North America, uh, in Canada, where they grow uh, flax, lane and uh, chickpea together. They even grow three crops together, red lantail, red lantail, pea and yellow mustard. So they cut it at the same time and thresh the seeds. Um, it's what we do now with oilseed rape. This is a field of oilseed rape with companion crop. The oilseed rape is here. And, um, and we put a lot of plants with the oilseed rape. It's amazing now what we do. So we choose basically our weeds and, and, and the, the plant disappears uh, during the winter. And they, they do a little bit the work of herbicide and feed the crop and uh, basically uh, we have even an increase of yield with a diminution of the pressure of the weeds. And we also have not only a diminution of pressure of the weeds and, uh, and also the insect, but uh, all the research now shows that uh, minimum tillage or direct drilling and companion crop uh, are very good in savings in, uh, in herbicide, especially on Cranesville. And, and also on a lot of pests in the autumn, a lot of pests in the autumn because the oilseed rape don't look like an oilseed rape field. And, uh, and we say that uh, companion crops are better, that herbicide are better than agrochemical. That doesn't mean that we don't put any pesticide on the fields, but we use a lot of less. Now we are also starting to put in the oilseed crop, uh, clover, alfalfa, so when you harvest, the cover crop is already there. We saw that, uh, I mean, uh, at Hans Frederick Farm, and this do work very well. And uh, that's bring better nitrogen and structure in order to direct drill the wheat into the system. And uh, sometime, but that is more complicated, is to keep, to keep the, 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 the clover or to clip the alfalfa into the field when you harvest the, the crop. So this is more complicated to manage. And then we're getting to the end. Uh, that's a little bit the must about cover crop. Uh, some uh, American uh, colleague have managed to uh, grow, to transform one of the weeds into a crop. And that is called pennycress. Uh, it was used to be a very important weed in uh, North Dakota and South Dakota. And now they find out that there is some uh, special fat and Pepsi-Cola is using this uh, special fat in order to um, uh, qualify the cardboard for French fry. And uh, now they grow it as a crop. So imagine that sometime the ray grass will become a crop, why not? And so that's, uh, it's fantastic, this story. And uh, I mean, a few years ago, I follow some research also in the United States about uh, perennial wheat. Uh, I was a bit laughing at it, perennial wheat. But uh, today, uh, when I see what they can do, 
uh, well, it, we don't have to laugh about it. It's thought to be something quite interesting. I mean, it's not large yet, but why not? Because we don't have to plant it and a perennial plant compete better against weeds because most of the weeds we have are annual plants. So uh, looking at it, uh, weeds have been uh, a big problem for agriculture for many, many years. Uh, so we have to stay careful about weeds and I don't want to sa sell dreams, uh, but uh, a conservation agriculture have brought many ideas about uh, weed management and I don't want you to feel that we are not having any problem for weeds because when you look here, uh, we have uh, weeds growing in a plastic carpet. Uh, so plants are very clever in order to adapt. But uh, uh, there is a very big opportunity and, uh, and, and, and the best uh, strategy is to keep moving. Well, uh, on, on this, I like, I like to thank you very much. Uh, I had to make it short. Uh, I, I promised to Hans Henrik to really make it short. <laughs> so I'm open now to a few questions. Thank you. Thank you, Frederik. Slight scam dealing from. Um, it is very interesting, and uh, and uh, yes, you did you did well. There were many slides. I think uh, I think we had a good understanding of most of the slides. There were a few with a bit complexity that we may look back to later. Uh, but um, now we are we are we are open for questions. We got we got good time for questions. So one uh, one question so far I saw perhaps there are new comings up. This is this two by two uh, rotation. So you, you have a similar crop two years in a row and uh, mm -hmm. you may, in your part of Europe, you, well, you work in other areas as well, for instance, Ireland, that may be more similar to our climate, a bit, both concerning cover crops and, and, and concerning the crops we can grow. So what, what do you mean by growing the same crop? Is it the same crop or is it, is it just the same season crop? So can you have... Uh... It, is, it is not, it don't, don't have to be the same crop. It could be the same it's a concept, it could be a, a, a same crop, but it could be a different crop, but from a, di from a, from a different season. For example, uh, a, a good way to battle uh, ryegrass, which is uh, one of the main problems in several uh, system, um, we probably grow pea, uh, which could be winter pea, or which could be spring pea. And then after the pea, we plant oilseed rape. So by having pea, oilseed rape, or beans, oilseed rape, you got two years of uh, broad leaves where you can manage ryegrass and really go down the ryegrass pressure. And then you can go back to wheat after. It. So you can even do better. You go pea, winter or spring pea, then you go oilseed rape, but you can go oilseed rape with the regrowth of the pea and also with the clover and get out of the oil rape with a clover and yet then you, 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 uh, you roll the clover or you mow the clover so that will uh, even clean the field after the oil seed rape and increase the quality and the nitrogen. And then you go direct wheat and you will have the best proceeding for wheat, but you have two years of break before the wheat. And then you can wheat barley and, and then you have a kind of two by two, which is well adapted to your situation. Thank you, Friedrich. So, 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 uh, Knud, there was far today. I don't know if you have a comment, but I just want to comment again. Uh, so, so there's a comment from, uh, from my, my colleague I work with, Jan. Uh, uh, of course, we, um, we would very much like to have cover crops like you have, uh, and, and we, in, in the Carbon Farm Project, we have two organic farmers as well, so we work with Organic Denmark, so uh, we, we may get back to you on this issue, so we can come to Denmark and grow organic cover crops like we, we just saw, but that, that's another issue. It's, it's very inspiring also in, in, of, of, this, of this, this part. Uh, uh, can I bring uh, a comment? Uh, uh, Okay, we, we grow a big cover crop, but uh, our, crop, our crop, main crop, is not as good as your crop in Denmark. Uh, you, you have to bear that in mind. I mean, we, 
we are comp I mean we are compensating uh, uh, what the crop can't bring with cover crop. Uh, if the crop is bigger, well, it's normal that the cover crop is smaller. Hmm. So you're saying you're having lower yield in general, yes, uh, yes. Uh, 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 and are only only conservation farmers, uh, conservation agriculture farmers, or all farmers have low yields? That, no, that's uh, no, because uh, lower yield because of uh, weather conditions. I mean, uh, when you look at the the best yields for wheat uh, around the planet, the best yields they are in UK, they are in 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 Denmark, uh, they are in New Zealand. But the best yield are not in France, and it's not because we are not uh, bad farmers. It's just because the weather condition they are not as good. Okay, okay, interesting. So uh, I'm not. I'm. 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 I. I, uh, I mean, the best best uh, wheat growing areas in France will uh, get to. Uh, nine tons, 10 tons, 11 tons of wheat, maybe 12 tons, but very in a corner of a good field. Uh, the wheat yield uh, records is 10, 17 tons in New Zealand, and it was almost 17 tons in, in UK, but Northern UK, where the days are very long. And when you get to, it's a summer crop, basically, when you get to this area. But uh, uh, basically, it's too hot and too dry when we get in, 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 in uh, the end of spring, early summer. So <clears throat> our weather is better suited maybe for corn and growing wheat is not the best crop in most areas in France. Ah. Yeah, so another question that came up, I'm not sure who it was, but I said that's... Uh, um, some uh, asking for some more specific information about the effect of different crops on specific weeds. Uh, I, I expect this uh, differs a lot between farmers and between countries. But are there any are there any of the cover crops that that, that would have good <laughs> more potential than we, we presently know of? In uh, you, you show mustard. Uh, Sign up. Uh, are, are there any others that you think we could we could have use of that we we don't yet use? Okay, I mean there is a there used to be a lot of discussion in France about uh, allelopathy, so that means that uh, plants will combat each other by a little chemical in the soil or in the leaves. Uh, uh, there, 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 there has been and there is still a lot of. Uh, research done about allelopathy and uh, and there is also a little chemical combat between plants but basically we know that the the big uh, system uh, the main uh, systems are more important when the plant a plant that uh, sprout and start to grow faster will will help grow the weeds so you need a, a plant that germinate very fast and that grow very fast and the second thing is a plant that capture nitrogen very fast into the system because weeds like nitrogen, like, like the element. So that's where the cruciferia, like radish, mustard, are very good at it, you know, because they germinate fast, they take, they cover fast and take it. That's where the, uh, and, and that's where if you add with the cruciferia, you add legume, you will have the double knock, what I call, because the legume, when the nitrogen is low, the legume will can still grow and, and they will start shedding the system. And most of the weeds, they like sunshine. And if you get the light out of them, if they are low in nitrogen, like ragrass, and if you get the light out of them, well, it will be hard for them. That's where, for example, uh, uh, vetch or pea, are very good because they are winding plants and they, they really shade the soil. And if, 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 if the soil is well shaded, I mean, the weeds have no, no chance at the bottom. It's more by using a combination of plant that you will have a weed effect by trying to find the right plant with its chemical little combat and allelopathy. I hope I answered the question. 
Um, well, partly because the question was not clear from my side. Uh, so perhaps you should try something new, Bente. Er du der? Bente, har du lyst til selv at stille spørgsmål som kommentar? Vi har to, we got two questions later on on pesticides and fertilization, but Bente, er du der? Yeah. Hello, Fredrik Thomas. Thank you very much for a splendid uh, presentation. And also thank you very much for your answer right now. Uh, what I think we really need is to know, <clears throat> just as you explain about the, 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 the peas and the wedge, that they are good at covering, uh, and uh, later on they can uh, make their nitrogen themselves. But I also think that, um, uh, for instance, oat, uh, it's, it might be a plant that is very special, good at uh, combating uh, weeds. And I do not know if you have any information about rye, because my I cannot uh, document it, or, but I think it, it, it can be a disadvantage to use uh, rye when you have a special, uh, special problems with the Baselhel. I do not know if Baselhel, Henrik, you have to help me. What is the name of? Uh, Rat's tail fescue. Yeah. <laughs> what is I'm, I'm not sure I understand. You, you're talking. Uh, Oats, we know that oats are mm -hmm. come allelopathy uh, pro properties. Yes. Uh, that's right. Uh, and, and then you're talking about rye, okay? Yeah. Uh, rye uh, usually uh, combat weeds because uh, it is a, a very rooty plant and a really uh, very good at scavenging uh, all the nutrients. And also, it is a very tall plant. You know, in spring, it, it, the, the, the growing is very fast. So it, it, most of the time, it outgrow most of the weeds uh, compared to wheat, which is, uh, you know, growing slowly in spring. So yeah. it's not only one strategy. Uh, mm -hmm. Once again, I mean, the plants are not uh, working with only one strategy. No. And, and, and then... It, uh, you have to keep my conclusion in mind that you have to keep moving because the plants, your weeds are learning all the day, every time. I, I've seen in, um, I don't know if you know this island, it's, uh, we call it Reunion Island, Meeting Island, it's in, uh, near Madagascar in, uh, in, in the ocean. And, uh, and they used to, uh, to use plastic film, uh, 8.8 millimeters uh, thick plastic film in order to cover the fields for, for weeds. And they, but finally they got a weeds that have one little leaf and the leaf is just like a knife and it's getting through the plastic now. And the leaf and, and this plant start to be the plant, the weeds. And after a few years, I mean, the plastic didn't, doesn't work no more now. And, and their problems is, is this weeds that even the plastic is not managing. So every time you're using a strategy, okay, only one strategy, you're making a, 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 come on, a selection pressure. And this selection pressure will uh, give um, an advantage to the plant that, that do survive into the system. And the survivors will be the main problem in a few years. So yeah. Yeah, you have I to think, keep moving. Yes, and, but I think it would, would be uh, of very much benefit to know about this relation and you have it to put it very extreme in order to find out the relation. Uh, for instance, if you grow continuous, continuously, uh, a crop and then you find out which kind of weeds will uh, develop under these uh, circumstances. Mm -hmm. I think that we can get more specific knowledge that yes. can, that is what I'm going for. Okay, okay. Uh, I follow you on that, but that, uh, uh, that is research and uh, myself, I, I'm, I'm a farmer and I want to to 
keep my weeds problem in uh, in the comfort zone in order to be able to grow what I like to grow. Uh, but uh, but then uh, all those information will be interesting information to put in into our basket in order to uh, uh, um, uh, elaborate uh, a smaller strategy or even smaller strategy into into the future and take the good and take the good decision. I, I follow you on that. Good. Thank, thank you, Frederick. And uh, we, we, we will finish this uh, discussion in, in, in maximum of 10 minutes. And I, there are two uh, questions. Uh, at, uh, there are more questions, but there are two older questions in, in the, in the uh, chat that I'll take both at the same time. Uh, Leonard asked uh, about uh, pesticides. Well, we are impressed by your cover crops. So, so how are they grown? Do, do, do we protect them by pesticides? And another question that I cannot really find, but someone asked about uh, also do to fertilize your cover crops. Uh, and then I'll come back to the newer questions. So okay. <laughs> pesticides and fertilization of cover crops. Well, um, you don't have to be, to be compulsory. Uh, uh, if, if, if you plant your cover crop um, right after uh, harvesting, and usually our summer are very dry and the soil is dry when we harvest. And if you use the very little moisture that we have and start uh, emerging the cover crop with the leftover moisture before any rain, well, usually the cover crop will be ahead of all the volunteer and all the weeds because the volunteer and the weeds will grow when the rains will come. So if the emergence is before, I mean, the cover crop will, will be the first. And then uh, you have to be no-till or minimum, minimum, because each time you start moving the soil, you will start weeds and you will start volunteers. And that's uh, where, I mean, no-till um, have a great e effect because we are in a very dry situation right after harvest which usually we are dry at harvest time. If it's needed, if it's needed, we do spray cover crop if it's needed because you have to succeed in cover crop like any other crop. It is a crop. And um, uh, I think we have to think uh, rotation. We are, I mean, what I think I look at myself is the total agrochemicals I use on my farm is not how much for each crop? I mean, okay, the EU have a certain regulation on how much chemical you put on each crop, but it's the total agrochemical I put on my crop. And uh, for example, sometime I decide to spray a weed on the previous crop or cover crop for not having to manage the weeds in the next crop, because I know if I don't have seeds, I will not have this weed in the next crop, which is probably harder or more costly to manage, or I will not even be able to manage. So the weed, my weed killer strategy and expenditure is um, uh, organized or spread over my rotation or over my farm, but not only on one, one, one part. For the cover crop fertility, uh, when uh, we have a lot of straw and we have probably a lack of fertility, it is wise to fertilize the cover crop. It is wise. It is wise. You have to look at it as a crop. And fertilizer is, is, not, an, uh, is not an expenditure. It is an investment because the fertilizer will be stored by the cover crop and will be given to the future crop. It's not gone. It's not in your shed, okay? But it is in your fields, in your soil, into your system, and feeding the system and rotating. So it's not gone. It's not gone into the water. It's not gone into the air. It's just helping your system to grow. So it's not an expenditure. It's just an investment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Frederick. So now we are, we are we are coming to an end. So it is the last chance. Uh, perhaps did I miss anything? Did you look, Jakob? So uh, after we have clipped no, or so some sixth chance for the or maybe send the same question again. So we, we are asking for the last questions now, um, uh, Frederick. 
Nej, hans Henrik, jeg, jeg tror ikke, vi har glemt noget. Vi har, vi har sådan, chatten er fuldt op øh, med de øh, beskeder, der er. Så, nej. Hmm. Så vi, vi, jamen, vi, vi slutter om, om et par minutter med, med Friedrich, og så slutter vi fagdagen af lige derefter. Øhm, så er det, eller er det nu, vi slutter af? Eller er der lige en, der vil have det sidste ord? Der er ikke ret mange af det. Vi har talt meget. Vi did a lot of talking here in, in, in Aarhus. Uh, someone want to show, show off now, the last chance for today. Sidste chance for at lige sige et eller andet på udenlandsk helst. Omkring præsentationer, Marianne, det, det, det tror jeg. Jeg, think, jeg tror, vi kan stille dem. Jeg, jeg spørger Friedrich bagefter, øh, som Nils også har svaret med, 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 med. Det tror vi. Jeg skal indrømme, jeg kan ikke give det fint endeligt svar nu. Så. So. No, no one more to. Well, you, you, you presented it. It's very clearly, and we appreciate And uh, now it's very, very last. One new message to see what is it. That may be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, so that, that will be a good uh, question to, to finalize on. How do you, ah, uh, no, it, it's about, no, there are two questions from two different, but uh, yeah, no, no, there are two, this, this will be the last two questions. How about water protection protection areas in, in, in France in relation to, to pesticides? So, so in Denmark, we got this discussion of organic farming more or less as the only solution to protect uh, groundwater for, for pesticide leaching. Uh, is, did you convince any politicians to, uh, to, uh, to use cover, uh, conservation agriculture as, as protection uh, means of uh, pesticide leaching? Uh, very, very interesting question. Thank you for bringing that at the end. Uh, well, um, we, we there is quite a, quite a few research that has been done on that, and uh, and uh, the most recent uh, research that I published on uh, my magazine uh, was done uh, on uh, three neighboring farms, um, and uh, not uh, last winter, but the the winter before, where it was extremely wet. And um, they followed the, the, the pesticide, the nitrates, and also the, the soil into the drain, the drainage system of uh, three fields. And one, one is, uh, there are three, three neighbors, and one is a conventional doing uh, potatoes and all kind of crop and conventional. Uh, one is in the transition, uh, the third, three, two, three, third years uh, with uh, conservation agriculture and one is uh, 25 years even more and uh, and uh, the results were surprising but not surprising uh, the first thing is uh, the quantity of dirt into the water was very very low into uh, the long-term uh, conservation agriculture and uh, so low that uh, the water was almost clear so we We don't have only erosion from the top. We have also erosion into the drainage of the water. Uh, the second uh, results was interesting in terms of nitrates. I mean, uh, by memory, uh, one was uh, 17 uh, milligrams of nitrates per liter, and the other one was uh, 47 and uh, 77 gram milligrams of nitrates per water. This means that the farmer in conservation agriculture could help to clean the water of the other one by mixing the water. You have a, a water uh, that was under 50 milligrams of nitrate. The same things on about phosphorus. The phosphorus was very low on the conservation agriculture. And, and when we come to agrochemicals, they made the analysis of uh, 134 molecules of uh, agrochemicals. And uh, when you get to the first farm, I mean, you could follow, I mean, exactly, I mean, what agrochemicals the guys was putting in his fields. And I, as he was putting industrial plants, I mean, the pressure on agrochemicals is quite high and you will be able to see that into the water. You know, it was leaking. When you get to the second farm, I mean, they were quite less. 
but you will see uh, quite a lot of uh, AMPA, a a -M -P -A, uh, from glyphosate, and you will see some glyphosate into the water as well. And when you get to the third farm, uh, 25 years on agrochemicals, I mean, you see uh, uh, really what we call trace of, uh, of AMPA, no glyphosate, and almost nothing about other agrochemicals. Um, this was surprising and not surprising. Uh, when when the, the water is clean, well, it's clean. But the problems for many politics, and it's moving in France. And uh, uh, at the moment, I'm pretty proud of the Minister of Agriculture that we have. And, uh, and uh, a, a, a lot of uh, watershed are understanding that uh, being against and against everything, and even being against the farmer, it's not that what will help in order to solve the problem. And the thing is uh, working with the farmer. And we have seen the, the same story for nitrogen, okay? Uh, we even, and we had that discussion together on Senric, uh, well, that we were not able to grow legume in cover crop because they were supposed to be, uh, uh, um, supposed to be uh, taking the nitrogen from the soil, but with legume and other plants into cover crop, we do even a better job. We get all the nitrogen from the soil, but we also bring more nitrogen for future crop that we don't have to buy from Yara, for example. Sorry for Yara, and and and, and also we combat better you better the field. And if tomorrow, and which is already today we have also to capture CO2 from the air and put it into our ground and cover crop with legume at the best cover crop and the best uh, tools in order to also improve the problem of climate. So I'm 100% sure uh, that uh, if we uh, have uh, proper thinking and the broader thinkings about how we construct our agronomical system. The, the question is not eliminating, eliminating some uh, items, uh, some tools into the system. It's how we grow a better one. And the, the, the problems that we have, like nitrogen, pesticide in the water, lack of uh, biodiversity, climate problem, will be the good consequences of the right agriculture we develop on our countries. Thank you, Frederick. That was a very um, good question to finalize with, and you covered all these matters that we, we all uh, discuss uh, uh, of often, and um, all of these matters could be another talk of, 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 of uh, uh, to, to discuss. So, so I think that that should uh, uh, be the be the conclusion. So, so, and I hope that was uh, an answer to you, Christian. Uh, about no, no, that was not. That was that was. Yeah, that was another question. So, uh, so Friedrich, perhaps if you can, uh, when we we'll give you an, an applause in a moment. Uh, but uh, there's there's one question in the in the chat about good websites. So perhaps if if you as well could open the chat and uh, you may add something. You can put your own magazine as the first, and, and it was especially web websites about uh, cover crop knowledge. If, if you uh, if you if you have any you will share <laughs> you, you you may do it there uh, but I think for, for now we will conclude uh, uh, Henrik our chairman will will conclude the, the day but first we should give you a bigger big applause however we could we could do that but we could we could at least try to do something <laughs> 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 and 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 we yeah, we may come back we, we are lacking some of the information, for instance, about nitrogen leaching and pesticide leaching. So we may come back specifically on these matters if, if you if you can be more. <laughs> if no you got some, uh, so, 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 thank you. Uh, one, so so uh, that, that oh so we have your, your last comment perhaps. Yeah, we, we 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 have to work together. You know the the network of conservation agriculture is. Uh, is uh, very strong. I mean, we're, we have not been helped in uh, France or I think in other in Denmark or in England or in uh, other Euro countries. My, uh, the, it's not a top-down system. It's just a network of farmers, a network of researchers. And uh, I think uh, it's also why I'm very happy to be with you today because we are networking and exchanging knowledge and by by doing though, that's how we will uh, uh, 
make the politician change and get for better rules for better agriculture in Denmark, in France, and other European countries. Thank you. We agree. We agree. So thank you, Frederick. Um, and um, we will come back to you about details later on. So I, I will give the word to. Thank you. Um, so, so thank you. And, and uh, you, you may, if you like, you may like to put some websites in, in the chat. Else I'll, I'll ask you on emails uh, on okay. cover crop knowledge. That, that's up to you. Okay. Um, so, Tak. Thank you. Thank you.